Thank you so much for all of you for coming today. Uh, I'm Katie Wolfson. I work at the Denver Museum of Nature and Science. I'm assistant coordinator for offsite programs and deal a lot with our distance learning programs. The Denver Museum of Nature and Science is really a two-way fully interactive audio video experience. And so just like Michael was saying, it's a live synchronous experience. I'm sitting here in Denver uh, talking to all of you in Atlanta, which is so much fun. Uh, and it's just a really neat, neat experience so that if you can't leave your classroom, um, I know it's hard with funding and buses and just schedules and all of that. Um, to be able to bring in people to your classroom and give your students experiences that maybe they otherwise wouldn't have. So we are um, going to do Segarunello. We'll go through it a little bit quickly, but all of you will still make your Segasaurus. So um, Kim, did I see you hand out our worksheets already? I did. Awesome. Um, so everyone should have two workshop work worksheets. <laughs> um, one is the Stegosaurus drawing, and the other is a model of um, helps us portion out our clay properly, and it also has vocabulary words. And so um, this is a tool for also hitting some standards and to work on vocab with your students. Um, and then everybody should get some clay. So everyone should get a ball of clay about the size of maybe a navel orange or a small softball. So go ahead, start breaking into that clay if there's some in front of you, and just kind of make it into a, a little ball with some clay, but it usually comes off pretty nicely. So with our Sculptosaurus program, um, I'm going to keep talking a little bit while you guys are getting your clay ready, uh, but our Sculptosaurus program, one of our goals is really to help students see that connection between art and science. And so, you know, students have a vision of what a stegosaurus looks like, right? But how do we know what a stegosaurus looks like? Does anybody have any ideas how we know what dinosaurs look like today? Fossils. Fossils, right? Yeah. So we have fossils that help us determine what dinosaurs look like. But the fossils are just the bones, okay? So we rely on other scientists and also artists, and we're all going to be paleo artists today, um, we're going to be paleo artists and fill in the rest of that state, the, the rest of the body beyond the fossils. We have to fill in all that muscle too. Okay, so that's where scientists rely on artists also to make renderings of these things that we don't see anymore today. Um, also, art's really useful for astronomy because we can talk about distant plan distant planets, but how do we know what they look like and how do we know what that environment is like? So that's really where art is really powerful in collaboration with science. And a lot of people think they're separate, but I think they go really well hand in hand together. Okay. Do you have your clay ready? I got a question for you. Oh, yeah. What is that? The paleon, uh, paleontologist artists, how do they know the length, the size of the bones that not there when they actually find them on a dig. How do they determine that information? Yeah, that's an excellent question. Uh, and so a lot of that goes into actually looking at modern animals, and they look at the ratio of bone size and bone thickness to how much muscle is on that animal in modern times. And then they kind of extrapolate that and, and do that with dinosaur bones. And so there's a lot of kind of biomechanics aspect of that and looking at math and ratios that you can bring into it too. Uh, but really it's by looking at modern animals and the relationship of their muscles to their bones and then translating that into dinosaurs. Cool. Yeah. Uh, so when we do our programs, we like to make them as immersive as possible. So does anybody know when a stegosaurus might have lived? Did I hear Jurassic? That's the uh, answer. Yeah, Jurassic, it was the Jurassic when they, when they lived. So that was around 150 million years ago. And behind me, I have the Denver Museum of Nature and Science today. But what do you think it might have looked like 150 million years ago? Trees. Trees? Uh, trees. A lot of vegetation. Uh, yeah. So 150 million years. Right. We had lots of trees. We had lots of vegetation. It was a lot warmer and wetter than it is in Denver nowadays. Maybe it's more like Georgia in the summer. <laughs> um, I grew up in southern Louisiana. I know what that humidity is like. <laughs> um, so yeah, so we, we are transporting now 150 million years ago to the Jurassic. Okay, and so we want to know what a stegosaurus looks like. And oh, 
We have one walking through right here. <laughs> I have a for as well. So, what what do you notice? What are some observations you can make about this stegosaurus? What is it? Big. Big, right? Yeah, it's a big one. What kind of what is it body shaped like? What does it have on it? My body spikes. Right, right? Awesome. So yeah, we are going to make our dinosaur just like that, as close as we can. So, oops, go back to that for a second. So what we are going to do now is we are going to start working with our clay. So everyone take your sheet that has all of your, um, your guide for breaking up your clay, and you should have your clay ball, and I want you to go ahead and shape it kind of like a burrito. So kind of make it a little bit longer and shape it like a little bit like a fat burrito. Okay, and then what we're going to do is we're going to divide this into rough three equal pieces, roughly three equal pieces. So you can kind of gauge that, twist off a chunk, and then put it in each of the circles. Okay. So you can compare it if you want to kind of check the proportions or the general shape. You can kind of hold it up here against your stegosaurus, but make sure you're picking it up off the paper too. Otherwise, you're going to end up with a flat dinosaur on one side, and we want nice and round all the way around, okay? So you can start looking at the head and make it a little bit narrower, okay? And so um, you can start kind of shaping that. <laughs> hey! Hey guys, hey, are you about to do the head? This is Allie the Allosaurus, everybody. Oh, don't worry about making it too big. Brain the size of a walnut. <laughs> <laughs> so that was Allie the Allosaurus. She comes in and out of our program with some tips for the kids. Um, so unlike Allie said, the brain of a stegosaurus wasn't actually the size of a walnut. It was the size of two and a half walnuts. So there. Um, obviously, we are our first time paleo artists, so it doesn't have to be perfect. Um, it takes years of training to be a really good paleo artist, but um, whatever you guys make today, it's going to look a little bit like a stegosaurus, I promise you that. So um, it's about the process of making it, okay? So what are we missing from our stegosaurus now? Legs. Legs, right? So... We are missing our legs. And so this is part of the program where we come in and we have the students get out of their seats and pretend to be stegosaurus. We have them get on, um, go on all fours and make no notice how their body um, is held and what the lengths of their legs are. So looking at this photo of this little girl pretending to be a stegosaurus, what do you notice about the legs? What are some observations you make? Short ones, two short ones. Two short ones, right? So is it the front or the back ones that are short? Front. The front, right? So we are going to make four legs for our stegosaurus, but we want two shorter and two longer, okay? So let's go back over to our clay here. And then that big middle spot portion of clay, those are our legs. So you want to divide those up into four chunks. So you guys can keep working on that. I'm going to show you how it's going to attach. You're going to take that um, plate that you've made, and you're just going to smush it onto the top of your stegosaurus, um, just like we did for the, oops, which way? This way. Um, just like we did um, for the legs and the tail. So I just smushed it on there, and then I'm going to blend the bottom of it down. Okay? So blend the bottom down. Okay, and then you can take your next one, Put it on, maybe overlap it a little bit if you're feeling artsy, and then blend it on there, okay? And so while we're working on that, I'm gonna ask Dr. Scott to tell us a little bit more about those plates. Dr. Scott, are you still there? Dr. Scott, can you hear us? Oh, sorry about that. Yeah, those plates, they're some of the most amazing things are any animal ever found. There's plates all along the back, some are small and some are large, it used to be thought that they sat flat. In fact, the name Stegosaurus means roof lizard because it was thought those plates formed like a roof over the body. But now we know that the plates were held up kind of vertical like that. So then paleontologists said, well, maybe they were used as weapons or armor to fight off the big carnivores like Allosaurus. 
but that doesn't really work either because those plates are pretty thin. They had lots of blood in them, so they wouldn't have been very good weapons at all. So there's two ideas right now that people use when they think about the plates. One idea is that the plates were used for controlling the body temperature, that stegosaurs could turn towards the sun and let the plates absorb sunlight and warm up the body, or the reverse, it could push warm blood into the plates and cool off. That's one idea. The other idea is that the plates are used for showing off, making the stegosaurus look really big and strong, and maybe to intimidate other kinds of stegosaurus, like, hey, don't mess with me, I'm huge. So we don't really know. It's kind of the way science works. We have one idea and another idea, and we try and test them to see which is the best one. Okay, so. Does everybody have your stegosaurus on its way to having its plates? So we should now have plates, we should have legs, we should have a head, we should have a neck. And what's the last piece that we're missing? Do you remember back to that first dinosaur we saw? What was on its tail? Yeah, it was a thagomizer. Oh, nice. We got a paleontologist in the audience. We're missing its thagomizer, right? So, the spikes on the tail, what do you think those spikes on the tail are for? It's for protection. Yeah, for defense. And so it could swing around with these big spikes and it could defend itself. So we don't want our dinosaurs to be defenseless. So we're going to come over here and we're going to add on those thagomizers. It's a good vocab word for your students. In a nutshell, our Sculptosaurus program. That was a pretty quick, abbreviated version of it. Uh, but, you know, does anyone have any questions about that one? No. Hi. No. No. Right. So anyone have some completed stegosaurus you can hold up in front of the camera for me? Here, buddy. Oh, right there. There's the camera. Nice. Awesome. Look at those. Those are fantastic.